Okay. Welcome to the next major project in the entire process, and that is the teardown of the car to get it to the point where I can start working on things. Uh, some might call it demolition. Uh, some things are going to be permanently removed. Some things are going to be temporarily moved. Some things are going to be left in place. Uh, the documentation will be made as to where wires go uh, so that they go back in the proper place in the end. But it's all in preparation to make the giant leaps forward in all of the upgrades. So let's get started. Please feed the YouTube algorithm by giving the video a like. If you want to see more like this, click subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. If you want to chip in on my expenses, I now have Patreon and YouTube memberships. Before I attack any more real projects, I've got to clean the inside. I've already cleaned the outside, but I'm going to put the target top in the trunk in order to keep it safely out of the way. But before I do that, I want to completely remove all of this because these are related to the lead acid batteries which are going away. I want to take all that out and then the target top just slots in here perfectly safely out of the way. Okay, all of that is torn out. You can actually see the transmission through there. I'll take the white box that was there, cut it down flush and use it as a little rear trunk storage compartment, but otherwise everything is good. The, there are some little rubber bumpers that go around this. This one was quite degraded. This one is still in good shape, but I'm going to check and see if I can order some new ones of those. And here's the remnants of the battery pack. And those wires you see are from a battery monitoring system called a pack tracker that was in charge of my 20 um, lead acid batteries, which are now no more. So I will be removing all of this. I may need to preserve that data cable, so I'm gonna leave that in place. And I will disconnect that power lead from that fan, which used to go to the fan back here clean it out and it'll be ready for the Tesla modules. And here we have all the gear in the front trunk. The good news and the bad news is everything changes. This charger is going away to be replaced by a new charger. This uh, 1772 plug and the extension cord plug are both going away in favor of the European Type 2 plug, which will be probably going in the back. The 12 volt battery box, the DC to DC converter, and the relay board are all going to go back into here, where there were four lead acid batteries, leaving this box for um, the three Tesla modules that will go here. I do have to do some surgery because of this cut in. The Tesla modules won't fit, so I need to reorganize uh, that corner, basically cut it out, turn it around, and reattach it. So the next step is to basically take everything here out. And I'm disconnecting the electrical and labeling all the wires so I know where they go back later. The front battery box is out. And sitting right there and the charging box with the auto transformer is here which the cable goes all the way around to this outlet and I had a twist plug holding that all together so I can remove that then I've got to figure out these wires here that go back through the firewall this, folks, is an auto transformer, a toroidal wound 240 to 120 volt transformer. And that's because that charger, which I've put up there, is 120 volts only. So when I plugged in at a public charging station, I needed to step down the voltage first, then get it to the charger. And that 
puppy is heavy. And the other cable coming out is the J1772 data cable because it's got two pins for basically making contact and then there's a signal pin to tell the charger that the car is ready for a charge. So this all goes and we have a nearly empty bay. Okay, the next phase of the strip down involves removing all of the high voltage DC cables. These are welding cables with hundreds of very, very fine strands inside. I'm removing them for two reasons. One is they're not orange, and that's uh, required. Uh, two, they're being routed to different places, and so the lengths uh, are not going to match. And three, three things, the cabling currently goes from front to back inside this little section is where the hot air pipes were back when there was a gas engine here. But the problem is the wire comes inside the passenger compartment up here, goes through this uh, disconnect circuit breaker, and then through here. I believe this is explicitly banned by the Spanish rules because they don't want any chance of high voltage inside the passenger compartment. So I'm going to pull all that out and I'll eventually run the DC underneath the car. So let's get started on that. So here's the uh, circuit breaker out of the car. I have to see if I can reuse this because it's a big, heavy, expensive piece of equipment. But every other conversion I've seen uses a real fuse and then a a separate disconnect switch uh, where this kind of does both of the jobs together. Problem is these tend to be more rated for AC than constant DC which puts a far higher load on it. And I'm just going to have to check the specs and see if this is reusable. And now we can see where it comes in from the frunk goes out to the bat back battery box and then this one goes straight back making a full loop of the high voltage DC so I get to pull all that out and the battery loop comes in here to this pack and back out it goes up here to this pack over to there back to here and then down inside the passenger compartment through that little grommet fitting so that's all got to go okay high voltage is pulled and the battery box is pulled except for the fan wire. The circuit breaker is out and to get the box out you have to take the trunk lid off so that's gone in in a safe place. Now the battery box is so big and the spacing is so tight that I forgot that this is built in two pieces and they bolt together here and here. You undo the bolts, you lift this piece out, you slide this piece forward and then that comes out. That gets me access to the high voltage cabling and this contactor box which will be going away in favor of the EVTV V2 controller. So now we're up on the lift which is a present from the heavens and you can see this is where the wires come and go from the front. So I've got to unclip all of these and pull these and separate them from everything else. Now I've got the contactor box open. This whole thing is going away. You can see the two black wires coming in from the front go right onto there. So that's the next task must resist the urge to clean. Now the contactor box is out and I remember why I hated it so much. These are all the remnants here. All the low voltage stuff and the DC which I can now pull through. If anything went wrong in that box it was basically trapped here and I would have had to do the entire disassembly of everything you've seen here just to get to maybe fix one wire. I won't make that mistake again. Okay, all of the high voltage DC lines are out except for the ones that go directly from the con 
the controller to the motor. I'll swap them out individually for orange, but uh, the high voltage teardown is complete. Uh, what a nightmare. And the good thing is, in that heater pipe, all there is is uh, it's a set of low voltage signal cables that go up to the dashboard. I can very easily run the hot water uh, for the coolant through there and back because it's designed to have heat running through it and it's not going to affect those wires at all. Uh, but that's a job for another day. And this is what I have for today's efforts. The time has come to start swapping out these cables and you know what that means. Gotta break out the scrub brush. I'll put little baggies around the things that don't want to get wet. And the last part of the teardown is to mark and cut these last bundle of wires that go out to the back. Then I am safely rid of this box. Okay, the final act of teardown I pulled all the wires out of this box so now this this is an independent plate that I can mount inside the box that goes here and all the wires have been labeled and they will also go in here. The only question is this relay right here has to do with the, the behavior of the charger and I have to see if that's compatible with the new Thunderstruck or if I need to redesign something there. But otherwise, the teardown is complete. And I got a lot of wire lying on the ground. And of course I had to take the rack out and clean in here. Luckily there's no rust, everything's in good shape. And that means the teardown is complete. And now I start to build it back up again. Just before we wrap up, I want to thank my Patreons, Peter Bouvier and Puppy, for their support. We also just popped over 2,000 subscribers, which is quite a nice milestone for my little channel. All support is greatly appreciated. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, please give it a thumbs up. I see that 81% of the viewers aren't subscribed. Please do, as it does help the YouTube algorithm. Take care, and see you next time.